Hi, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm here to talk today about our company, IDenomics. Um, we are listed on the NASDAQ under the symbol, symbol IDEX. Our primary uh, areas of operations are in the adoption of EVs by commercial fleet operators. We're focused on the facilitation and adoption of commercial EV by fleet operators. So we are not in the consumer car business like Tesla. We're providing um, vehicles, uh, electrification of vehicles for large scale fleet operators. We'll talk more about that in the next few slides. The idea of acquiring those fleet customers um, has two real reasons. One, so we can either sell them our vehicles or our partners vehicles. And then once they're a customer of ours, we then market them energy services, which is electricity to charge the vehicles as well. We are a US based company headquartered in New York, but we do have a very large China presence. We have offices in Beijing, Guangzhou and Qingdao. And internationally, we also have offices in the Ukraine and Malaysia. The global EV market, as many of you are aware, is a, is a very big opportunity. Uh, more and more countries are putting regulatory frameworks in place and government policies to move away from gasoline and diesel vehicles. There are many, many vehicles on the market in the commercial sector, uh, which are the main contributors to the pollutants in the air, okay, that these policies are looking to remove. Uh, particularly in China, it's very aggressive on these policies because it has very large, very dense cities with high populations. Um, any of you that have spent time in big cities such as Beijing, and Chengdu in the winter know how bad that the, the pollution can be. So the Chinese government has responded with very aggressive policies to get commercial vehicle operators to change their vehicles onto clean electricity and hydrogen. For this reason, we focus on four main categories. We focus on trucks and specialty vehicles. We focus on delivery vehicles. These are the vans and trucks that do the last mile deliveries. In China, that would be folks like JD.com, China Post, et cetera. Um, the city buses and the tour buses. Um, city buses obviously service commuters in major cities, major urban areas. And obviously tour buses service many of China's beautiful scenic parks. Additionally, we also service the taxi and ride sharing sector. This is a very important sector as well, as this, these uh, vehicles do a lot of short journeys and very high mileage. So we're, a lot of people talk about ESG. A lot of funds are interested in, in companies that are um, investing in technology and products and services that are in a cleaner um, and more transparent uh, business. Um, Idenomics and its MEG um, division are at the center of this. And the reason that we focus on commercial fleets is that these are simpler to implement and regulate policies versus family vehicles. Okay, fleet operators are also continually changing their vehicles. A fleet operator doesn't change all of his vehicles in one year. He will change 10 to 20% of his vehicles over a five to 10 year period. Another reason is it's one to many. Fleets have lots of vehicles. So a policy that impacts a fleet operator can Im impact anything from a few dozen to tens of thousands of vehicles. And the real reason that commercial fleets are being looked at from a regulatory perspective is they drive more miles, they take more cargo, okay? And they have a heavy reliance on diesel fuel, diesel fuel, which is the most pollutant of all the, all the vehicle fuels out there. So this is the reason that it's a very interesting area to be in. It's a very large area. Uh, it's a very large area in China. It's a very large area in North America where a lot of goods are shipped by road. I'm gonna to talk to you about our um, revenue model, how we make money. Um, I'm going to move on to the China's, uh, Chinese language, the Mandarin slide for you. Um, but essentially, we have a model that we call S to F to C. In English, that sounds for, stands for sales to financing to charging. So fleet operators, um, EV and electric vehicles, it's new to them. Um, so what we do is we offer them a full set of services. We offer them the procurement of the trucks. We will help them find the best truck at the best price 
with the best specifications for their needs. We will also help them finance that vehicle. And then we will help market to them either prepaid electricity so they can charge cheaply at their own depots or discounted access to our preferred charging networks. On the right of the vehicles, you can see the kind of uh, percentages of commissions that we make from what we call a spread. The spread is the difference between what we buy the vehicle for from the manufacturer and what we sell it onto the fleet customer for. And you can see these range from the two to 4% for taxis. Obviously they're smaller vehicles. They're essentially passenger cars, so they don't cost as much. So it's harder to earn a big commission on those. But when you move into the larger ticket items, such as vans, trucks, and city buses, they're much bigger value items, so you can earn a, a larger spread commission on them. We also get a commission from the placement of financing, typically around 1%. When you're in the commercial space, um, some of the financing deals can be for millions to hundreds of millions of dollars. So obviously earning 1% um, fees for placing the finance is still meaningful. But the sales and financing are really just the way that we acquire our fleet customers. What we're really looking to do is market to them a change in energy. And this is a really important point to understand. Okay, the, most of the economy in the automotive industry is spent on gasoline and diesel. There is a shift taking place now where that will transform away from gasoline and diesel and into electricity. Okay, so once we acquire these customers by helping them find the right vehicles and helping them get the financing terms they need, we then market them our electricity products. As I mentioned earlier, we market them in two ways. One is we sell them wholesale prepaid electricity to use for charging at their own depots. We offer them preferred access to our charging partner networks where we earn as much as 3% on every charge. If you consider how much uh, that can potentially be in the market, that is like getting three cents on every gallon of um, gasoline or diesel that's put into a car. So that's a very potentially a very large recurring revenue stream um, throughout the future. We also help supply um, energy to 5G towers. 5G towers will be very important um, in the internet of vehicles. EVs come um, with Wi-Fi on board and provide a lot of data back to the owner and the, the manufacturer. And this is all going to be um, sent over 4G and 5G towers. And finally, um, in China, we're putting together a program for a four-in-one energy card that we hope to launch in the near future. And that's being done with our partner, China Union Pay, who many of you will be familiar with. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're an American company, but we very much have a global footprint. Our largest operations are currently in China. So we have our head office in the US in New York, and we also have Medici Motor Works. So Medici Motor Works will be us selling our branded vehicles that are made by OEM partners in China and South Korea. In China, we don't sell our own vehicles. There are so many EV manufacturers. It's such a um, competitive market. We don't believe there's an advantage for selling our own vehicles. So we work with the major manufacturers, BYD, SAC, JAIC, Dongfeng, uh, Geely. Uh, they help us provide vehicles at very competitive rates to the fleet customers. And we also own in Malaysia, 51% um, of Tree Electric. Tree Electric is an EV manufacturer, mainly focused on bikes, small cars, and small trucks. ASEAN is a very important region for us. It's an excellent region for us to help our partners in China export to. Um, and it's also a high growth region. Countries such as Indonesia, Cambodia, Vietnam, the Philippines are experiencing high growth in population and also tourism. So they're all looking to implement very robust um, environmental policies, which move towards EV. Um, talk a little bit about what we've been able to achieve as a company in the first half of 2020. Obviously we were impacted by COVID. When you're in the vehicle, EV vehicle space, it's a physical delivery business. So the first quarter and some of the second quarter were impacted by the pandemic in China. However, we did achieve deliveries and revenues in the first two quarters. Uh, we've continued to develop a very broad 
robust order pipeline. We opened up our EV Expo Center in Qingdao. Qingdao is a very important place for us. As many of you know, it's a beautiful port city on the, on the Yellow Sea and across the water from South Korea and Japan. We have an EV Expo Center there that many partners are joining us in in the coming months. And that will be a um, focal point for fleet operators to come and learn about EV and the different types of vehicles that are available to them. We reduced the company's debt on its balance sheet by around 50% in the first half of the year. And we had a good, good amount of cash on our balance sheet to fund our operations at the end of June as well. Um, and we also established our Medici Motor Works brand um, for use in, in North America and Europe. In the second half of the year, we have a, a much larger focus on executing on the deliveries and the revenues from those orders. Now that the, uh, the COVID is more or less under control in China, uh, we're able to recommence deliveries from province to province. So now we can start to deliver on our order book. We've continued developing large scale orders with things like um, large fleet operators for trucks, uh, mining operators for trucks, um, municipal city bus operators for city buses and taxis. We are developing a battery as a service with partners including CATL, a very large EV battery uh, maker based out of China. And we're bringing additional dedicated financing sources online with financing partners. This is important to help those fleet operators get into the trucks at the right price. And we're also building out our North American supply chain so that we can introduce our Medici Motors product. Again, um, those, those trucks will be built um, using OEM partners in China and South Korea, as I mentioned earlier. Um, quick look at our executive team, um, obviously mainly a, a North American team. Uh, we do have a number of um, uh, native Chinese uh, people within the executive group. Um, our chairman, Dr. Bruno Wu, um, is a relatively famous person in China. Um, his wife is Yang Lan, who is a media and TV personality, many of you may know. Um, Zhu Zhen is our president of our um, MEG operations of our EV business in China. And uh, Kate Lam is in, with us in New York, um, but she's a Mandarin and um, Cantonese speaker who was previously based in Hong Kong. Uh, Shi Shi, let's move on to the, uh, the question and answer section. Thank you, Alf, uh, for your time. So quite a few questions. So I'd like to pick a few ones to, to ask. Uh, this person, Jason, he's asking you, a few months ago, you mentioned about the Triletic uh, IPO will come maybe the end of the year. Is this still in the time or what's the what's sort of timeline here? Um, COVID has obviously slowed us down there, but yes, there is a lot of interest um, from the financial sector in TRI. Um, TRI is a very important asset to us. We have the King of Malaysia as a co-investor with us. Um, they're hoping to build that as a national brand for that part of uh, Malaysia and for Southeast Asia. And uh, there are ongoing discussions around um, um, around uh, you know potential IPO for tree. Yes. Okay. And the second coming from Adam, he's asking about uh, the profits. Are, are they still buying uh, public transportations? Uh, are they gonna being slowed down by the COVID nineteen cases here? Uh, yes, COVID nineteen obviously did slow it down. I mean, as we've seen in in the US and Europe. Um, when people were locked down in their homes, obviously there was much less need for public transportation. So that has slowed things down. But what we've seen in the, um, the economic stimulus package in China is the, the central government in China encouraging at a province level for them to accelerate some of their spending on initiatives such as electric vehicles, city buses and charging infrastructure. So the second half of the year, we expect that to bounce back. Okay. And this uh, question coming from the Chinese side, KTWJ. Uh, so maybe you can explain better. Uh, what do you think of your core competency is in your company? Is it a business model or technology or what, what do you think is your core competence uh, advantage of your company? I think our core competency is our business model. Um, we really understand what it takes for a fleet to move over to electrical energy from gasoline and diesel. Um, we do sell our own vehicles in, we will sell our own vehicles in North America. We sell our own vehicles in South Asia, in 
to our tree electric brand, um, but we don't do that in China. But regardless, wherever we operate, our intention is to get our customers into the best vehicles. They may not be our vehicles. Sometimes we may partner with other manufacturers. Um, so we're taking a slightly different approach. We're not just selling our own products and technology. Uh, we're selling our services as well. So our intention is to, to get a, a, a fleet operator into the best vehicles with the best specifications for his needs at the best price and the best lease financing term. Sure. So, I saw a couple of uh, messages coming in before asking you, do you will you, um, uh, how about the US market? Have, is, is it suitable for, to, for this kind of market here in, uh, in your business model? Yes, we, we absolutely believe it is. That's why we've launched the Medici Motor Works brand. Um, that's going to be our brand for North America and for Europe. And we'll be bringing um, vehicles over that we build with our OEM partners from China and South Korea um, in 2021. Okay, I think that's fair enough. Uh, I sort of has uh, gone through most of the questions. Uh, and uh, thank you for your time, Elf, today. Mm -hmm.